Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm going to show you how to encrypt access tokens for your OAuth implementation. When building an OAuth integration, it's very important that you encrypt the access tokens you obtain before storing them. It'll help protect you and your app's users. In this example, we'll show how to encrypt using Node.js, but each language has their own libraries for encrypting, and the process should be roughly the same. Let's take a look. Here we have some functions we're importing from the Node crypto library. The first one just lets us generate some random bytes, a function for encrypting our data, and then another for decrypting our data. Then we have our key that we're using to encrypt everything with. I have this hard-coded here for example, but it's very important that you protect this key. If someone else gets a hold of your key, they can decrypt anything that you encrypted with it. Also, if you lose this key, you will no longer be able to decrypt anything that you encrypted. Be sure that this is stored safely and you properly control who has access to it. Now let's take a look at our encrypt token function. I want to first call out the create cipher IV function, since this is what we use to do our encryption. It expects us to pass in three arguments, the encryption algorithm we're using, an encryption key, and an initialization vector. Now, looking back up a bit, we're defining the encryption algorithm that we're going to be using, which is AES-256-CBC. That stands for Advanced Encryption Standard 256-Bit Cipher Blockchaining. Next, we have our IV, which is short for Initialization Vector. This is used to create a random initial state for our encryption to make it more difficult for someone to be able to guess what our encryption key was that we used. We're just generating some random bytes and converting them to hex for it. Then we're creating a cipher variable and calling create cipher IV, passing in our algorithm, encrypt key, and IV. Next, we're creating an encrypted variable and calling update on our cipher, passing in our token, setting the input encoding to UTF-8, and our output encoding to hex. Then we're going to call the final method on our cipher, passing in hex as our output encoding. Now that we're done encrypting our token, we can return back the IV and our encrypted token. It's important that we would return both of these since we need the initialization vector for decrypting the token. That covers how to encrypt a token. You can now safely store what has been encrypted in your database so that you can use it later when you need to make a request with it. But now we need to go take a look at how to decrypt that token once you're ready to make a request with it. Now we can go take a look at our decrypt token function. You'll see that our function now takes in two arguments, the token and an initialization vector. Just like before, we need to set what algorithm we're using. Then we're creating a decipher variable and calling the create decipher IV function, passing in the algorithm, encrypt key, and our initialization vector. Next, we create a decrypted variable and assign it by calling update on decipher and pass in our token, setting the input encoding to hex and our output encoding to UTF-8. Then we just call final on decipher and assign it to our decrypted variable using plus equals here. Finally, we return our decrypted token. Let's take a look at everything in action now. Let's create a variable called access token to represent a token that we got back from the obtained token endpoint of the OAuth API. Then we'll create another variable called encrypted token and assign it using the encrypt token function, passing in our access token. You can just log this out here to see what shows up. Now let's run this to see what that looks like. OK, we can see it's printed out a JSON object that has our initialization vector and our encrypted token. Awesome. Now let's go the other way around and decrypt this token. We'll just create a new variable named decrypted token and called decrypt token, passing in our encrypted token and initialization vector. Let's save and rerun this now. Awesome. We see that it's both encrypting and decrypting our token. That should cover the basics of how to encrypt tokens. Now, although we are showing how this is done with the Node.js crypto library, most other languages should have a similar library that you can use, since we were using a standard encryption method. You want to remember that you should be encrypting access tokens to keep them safe, and also to be very careful to protect the encryption key that you use. Thanks for watching, and happy coding!